You've completed your hardware installation and you're one step closer to starting that engine for the first time. At this point, you should have already loaded a global file, but before the engine will start, you need to perform a TPS auto set. If you skip this step, the fuel pump or the injectors aren't going to receive power. Before you perform the TPS auto set, you want to mechanically make sure that the throttle opens all the way, and not by just looking down in the throttle body and opening it up. You want to have a buddy look in the throttle body while you depress your accelerator pedal all the way to the floor and make sure that the throttle opens all the way. If you look at the data monitor in your software and you see that the TPS readings read needs calibration, or if you have a vehicle with a drive-by-wire throttle body and the pedal position sensor says that it needs calibration, that's a dead giveaway that the auto set hasn't been performed. If you don't have a buddy to look in the throttle body for you when you check to make sure it opens all the way, you can always get a little bit creative with the video camera on your cell phone. Once you've confirmed that it opens all the way, you'll need to go in with your laptop and perform that TPS auto set. I'm going to go around to the driver's side and we're going to show you how to do that. At this point, you should have mechanically checked to make sure that your throttle opens all the way. If you haven't, you want to stop and go back and do that. You don't want to shrug that step off. Over the years, I've fixed countless cars that people complained were slow by just making sure that the throttle actually opens up all the way. Once you've got that confirmed, you need to go in, connect your laptop to your ECU, turn the ignition to run, and we'll need to go in and perform a TPS auto set. You'll perform the TPS auto set by clicking on your sync drop-down arrows and going down to where it says TPS auto set. Select TPS auto set and follow the prompts on the screen. In this case, it can tell you to make sure that the ignition is on but not started. And you want to go ahead when you're ready and click start. Once you click start, it's going to tell you to press the throttle slowly to the floor twice. And then select done. If it was successful, at the top it will say TPS auto set was successful. And all you need to do is hit OK. Before it will initialize the fuel pump and initialize the injectors, you're going to need to cycle the key off and then back on. And there you have it. We got our fuel pump running, our injectors. Now we can move on to some additional pre-start checks before we go to start the engine for the first time. So we did a TPS auto set and it was successful. But what happens if you try to do a TPS auto set and it's not successful and it fails? So a couple things that you want to check. First of all, make sure you don't have thick carpet or floor mats. It could be giving you some erroneous readings when you need to press the pedal. Something else you'd want to check is if you have a mechanical throttle body, but you started with a global file that was designed for a vehicle with a drive-by-wire, for example, an LS application, and that drive-by-wire ICF is still loaded in the global file, you're going to need to remove that, otherwise it's going to fail every time. So you want to make sure that your global file matches your throttle configuration that you have in the vehicle. Let's say that you've got a successful auto set, but you cycle that key off and back on and the fuel pump doesn't run. We've talked before a lot about wiring, and that's usually something that's going to be a simple wiring mistake. A couple things you want to do is go in and double check from your main harness installation. There's at least 16 gauge red wire, and you want to make sure that's connected directly to battery power. You also want to make sure that the small black ground wire is also connected to a good clean ground. Make sure you didn't accidentally put it to a painted surface, so I'm just not getting good connectivity because that's the ground wire for the relay that powers up the injectors and the fuel pump. And the 16 gauge red wire is the wire that sends power to that relay as well to power up those injectors and the fuel pump. If all of that checks out, you want to look at your main system harness. Make sure that this main relay is completely intact. Make sure that it's in tight. And also check the fuse that's next to it. Make sure that it's not loose. Make sure that something during the initial installation didn't potentially short out and you've blown that fuse. If you still can't figure out what's going on, give our tech line a call and we'll try to help you figure out what's happening in the background. For more information and tech tips and videos on Holly EFI, go to holly.com.